Ahoy Captains, it's Baz again with another video from World of Warships Legends. And today we have a let's play for you. We're in the Janway. This is the Tier 4 Pan-Asian Tech Tree Destroyer. And for this match we have a game of Epicenter on the map Trident. Kind of like uh, having the, the odd Epicenter match once in a while just to mix things up. Just for the sake of having something different. Because that's what we need in the game right now. At least that's what I think. We need some more variety. And I feel like they just give you the right amount of these epicenter matches. I only have like a couple every week, and I think that's pretty much uh, just the perfect amount. Because let's be honest, it's not really anything special. But I do like how different it is. So anyways, these Pan-Asian destroyers, we'll talk a little bit about them right now. Their claim to fame are their deep water torpedoes. And what that means is that their torpedo detectability is quite low. And apparently their chances of uh, incapacitations are higher, although I don't notice it personally. So overall the torps are just harder to dodge, and the trade-off is you can't hit destroyers. It's just something to keep in mind if you are playing these ships for the first time. As for this match, the beginning a couple of minutes here, a little bit slow. So bear with me here before things start to really ramp up. Unfortunately, you'll notice that uh, we have AP loaded. It's not ideal when uh, the first ship you're most likely to go up against is an enemy destroyer. But we recognize their mistake. Swap back to AG. Now, for the Janeway, I do actually use a torpedo bolt build. May as well pop our commander up on the screen here. We're using Dang Shi Chang. He's the torpedo bolt captain for the Pan Asian line. He's a nice little base traits. Reduces your detectability a little bit and increases your torpedo damage a little bit. Nothing special, but any little bit helps. And for the skills, we use uh, Subsurface Venture, Look at Me Now, Back in Stock, Smoke in the Water, and for the legendary skill, Unstoppable. And our inspirations were Eric Bay and Vincent Mordoff. I was experimenting with uh, these boats at the beginning there. I wasn't quite sure if they would uh, be better as torpedo boats or be better as gunboats. For the Janeway, I think I settled on a, a bit of a hybrid build. Not really an all-out torpedo build, as you can tell by the Mordoff inspiration. But you can't really do a gunboat build on it because the reload time is just way too gross. Try as you may, I don't think you can get the reload below 7 seconds. So that's why I went with the Torpedo Boat Commander. But then for the subsequent Pan-Asian Destroyers like the Fushin and the Gajamana, I'm still working on the Gajamana, so I haven't unlocked the Sinyang yet. For those ships, I use a gunboat build. Now, the thing I like most about these Pan Asian destroyers is that you get four smoke screens. They also have a long duration, meaning that they're the largest smoke screens. And they also have one of the quickest reload times, which means you can uh, use them quite often. You don't really have to hold on to them, you can use them willy nilly. And that means you can play these ships more aggressively and then use your smoke screens to get yourself out of trouble. At the beginning of this match, we had a western spawn and we kind of played that uh, area of the map. But then once we saw that the enemy started to uh, capture the epicenter circles, and we saw that our team was sort of playing passively, we said, we gotta get in there. So we went as close to the middle as possible. Now when we first started going over to the middle of the epicenter circle, uh, about a minute ago, we got spotted briefly. And it was by the frickin' enemy kamikaze. Damn things and their 4.4 ridiculous OP uh, concealment. So we couldn't go right into the middle or risk getting fired at uh, from other ships and the enemy team. So we had to play it a little uh, patiently until we figured out where that kamikaze was. And just there he showed himself, right before our smoke screen reloaded. We couldn't pass out the chance to shoot at him, but unfortunately he disappeared before we were able to uh, target him. Our shells missed, but we were able to uh, drop stick to ability by using our second smoke screen. And hey, we still got two to go, so that's what I like about these ships. You can use their uh, smoke screens to uh, try to make aggressive plays. Now we know that the uh, kamikaze is not uh, in the epicenter circle, or the center circle, I should say. We can go and try and capture it. So we got uh, the one circle already. I guess that's the, the second circle. And we're about to uh, cap the middle one here. Launch some uh, torpedoes against uh, a couple of those battleships that are kind of sitting there doing nothing. Now that we have that uh, center epicenter circle. Boy, that's a tongue twister. I'll say that again. 
We're gonna go and see if we can hunt ourselves down a kamikaze. Now I don't really want to use bad words here, but he, uh, he plays this entire match like a scared little bleepity bleep. So we don't get our guns on him very much this match. We did get uh, three tour pits and a couple of floodings on the, the Congo. Unfortunately, we didn't realize that Bayron started to push in and he uh, spotted us briefly for a second, so we had to reposition ourselves to try and stay out of range of the secondaries. Another strength of these Pan Asian destroyers is they do have pretty decent uh, base detectability. If you are going with a torpedo boat build, you can spec into concealment and get it pretty low. Ours is at 5.2 without really trying too hard. And I'm sure you could get that below 5 if you wanted to. So we're heading over to uh, the other side of this island. We'd love to finish off this Congo if we could. But he knows better. He knows that uh, there could be torps coming. We send them anyways, just because. He did spot us briefly for a second. We thought uh, maybe we dropped detectability by uh, hiding behind that little ridge of the island. It's really hard to tell just how high an island has to be for you to not be spotted from uh, behind it. You know, in this case, we didn't really care. We just started shooting at the Congo. We'll try and bait them into uh, coming around the island and uh, running into our torps. One of our teammates slapped him pretty hard there, so that was good. We know that he used his damage con, so now that we have him on fire, it's just a matter of time. And bingo! There we go. We get our first kill of the match. We set a smoke screen as well, so we can continue to fire our guns, this time at the Byron, right behind the uh, Congo. One of our uh, torpedoes actually hit the Byron there. Believe it or not, we had uh, intended to do that. Find him up with our second torp launcher if you want to rewind and take a look for yourself. We were just a little worried that that kill would get poached from us. But luckily, the flooding got him, and that was our second kill of the match. There's that damn kamikaze now. Boy, if we could have only uh, gotten our guns around on him. These Pan-Asian uh, destroyers, unfortunately, have very slow turret traverses. That's the thing I probably hate about them the most. Maybe hate's a strong word, I would say. The thing that I like least about them. Our friendly Matsuki uh, was a lot closer to that Kamikaze than we were, and we were hoping that uh, he would uh, chase it down a little bit there, but unfortunately, he disengages. Our torps are about to reload, so we're going to uh, get them off against this uh, Frederic here. This match is very close. We're even in shifts, but we do control a couple of the cap circles, so I'd say we do have the advantage here. The one thing about epicenter mode is all the cap circles are within each other, so it makes them a lot easier to defend than if you were playing in domination mode, where the caps are usually quite spread out. Oh, why, hello, Mitsuki. And goodbye, Mitsuki. That is our third kill of the match. Just before dispatching that Mitsuki, we did get a couple of uh, tour pits on that uh, PEF. We were hoping that uh, he would continue sailing in a straight line and we'll get a couple more uh, torp launchers out on him. Maybe try and get a perma flood. Maybe a little bit of wishful thinking. He's playing with his rudder and his uh, speed quite a bit. So we kind of played with our torp positioning a little bit too. And it looked like he sped up a bit. So what we're going to do is uh, pop a few shots at him, try and bait him into uh, slowing down and uh, running into our torps. But at the same time, we're getting awfully close to a cruiser on the opposite side of us. Luckily, our smoke screen uh, reloaded in the next time, so we hit the brakes and let that uh, help us drop our detectability. And, ooh, that Emil's at low health. Uh, I smell uh, some seafood on the horizon. Does anyone know what Kraken tastes like? We have to look at that PEF to see how his health is doing first, because we need him. And our flooding got him after our two torpids. That was our fourth kill of the match. Now we just gotta hope that uh, this Emil doesn't get poached from us either. Got a few shots of HE, and then we just uh, swapped to AP just for the hell of it. I don't know what kind of effect it's gonna have at uh, this range, but he is full broadside to us, so let's give it a go. Our first level just left him with a sliver of health. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, there we go. Kraken Unleashed. Fifth kill of the match. It also brings our total damage up over 100,000. No high caliber uh, metal, though, unfortunately. We must have been pretty darn close to it. We'll just assume we were right close to it. Now, unfortunately, there is uh, four minutes and change left in this match. And guess what the last ship on the enemy team is? It's a bloody kamikaze. And he's just going to spend the rest of the match running for no reason. 
just to be a jerk. We're going to cut to the end of the match here in a second, but I just want to say, if you are in this situation, there is absolutely no hope of you coming back. Just give yourself up, guys. Move on with your lives. You know, show some sportsmanship. If you're not going to have respect for your own time, have a little respect for everyone else's time. Just end the match and move on to bigger and better things. So here we are at the results screen. We have our 100,000 in damage, 5 sinkings, and the Kraken Unleashed Metal. We also had 2 captures and an assisted capture. And yeah, overall, a nice little game of the Jianwei. And yeah, like I mentioned earlier, if you are having trouble uh, using the Jianwei as a uh, gunboat, try a torpedo boat build. Or try a hybrid build. Something a little different. And you might have a little more success. Well, hope you guys did like that video. Hit that thumbs up button for me. If you want to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. Feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, take care of yourselves and do what makes you happy.